African activist for 20 plus years now. You've seen the best and the worst that's gone on on that continent. And um, of course now we're discussing the war in the Congo. How would you rate this situation with all the other things you've seen in Africa? It's truly like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, I have indeed been for now a quarter of a century living and working in African war zones and there is a qualitative and quantitative difference about the level of human suffering in the Congo. Uh, there is no war remotely like it since World War II, since the Holocaust, in terms of the number of people who have died as a result of the war. 5.4 million people in 12 years. And there is no equal around the world in terms of the level of sexual violence, violence against women and girls. And so it really is, uh, it has no parallel. No, in my experience, nothing remotely like uh, the human devastation that's, that's uh, unfolding in the Congo today. Your campaign focuses on conflict minerals as being the source of the ongoing war in the Congo. A lot of people don't really understand what that means. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There is a, a fuel uh, for Congo's war that makes it deadlier than the other ones. And that fuel is the minerals that are mined in the Congo that are fought over between the militias, the armed groups, that uh, vie for the control of the mines and the smuggling routes. Uh, that, uh, and these minerals get sold into the international market and end up in our cell phones and our laptops and our video games and our iPods. And this, from the sale of these minerals, they buy arms, right? Yes, that's exactly right. And then it gets very political too because of where they're buying their arms from. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And until we say as consumers, you know what? it actually matters to us that you know where you're sourcing your raw materials for the products that we hold near and dear to us. Uh, until we raise our voices and say something, these companies aren't gonna change their behavior, so it's up to us. You mentioned that uh, you're perfecting um, a, a technology right now to enable the consumer to communicate with the, the makers of these cell phones. Yes, we're putting together a, 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 just one of these links on a website where you can just press the button and then it, put, it opens up and you can fill out a little note and then send that note and that note will go to the various cell phone companies saying build a cell phone that's conflict free and I'll consider buying it. Very, very simple message. But how powerful is that message? The power that we have as consumers. Instead of feeling guilty mm -hmm. That, our, that the cell phone that we use every day is actually creating human misery. Mm -hmm. Let's change it. Mm -hmm. This is a great solution because then every individual feel that they can do something. Now with these social networks that everyone has on the internet, if, you, if a person decides, you know, I'd like to do something about that, in five or ten minutes they can let hundreds of people know. Mm -hmm. Put it on your Facebook page, send it out to your email contact list, Twitter about it, do all these things and suddenly three, four, five hundred people know about something they didn't know about the day before, the, an hour before that, because you took an action. That's pretty powerful. Absolutely. Well, this is great. Thank you very much, John. Thanks, Anne. Thanks for <laughs> Okay, me. great. Sometimes it doesn't take one. It takes all of us. So I think you did a brilliant job in, in giving us hope that with Blood Diamond, it made a huge difference. So if they can do it, you know, with that, we can certainly do it with this, too. But this is certainly something that, with the atrocities that are, have gone on, I'm, 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 I'm stunned, really. Uh, as a freedom fighter and as a human rights advocate, I certainly am, uh, have sympathy and empathize with the movement. So this is important uh, for me. If we raise enough attention and and get people pretty much aware of what's going on, because that's the, that's the problem. A lot of people like to turn a blind eye. So people don't want to hear about what's going on. It's like, I don't need to hear about other people's problems, but guess what? You're a part of the problem. I mean, look at apartheid ended because of pressure from people like you and me, the ordinary person. Um, Blood diamonds changed because of people like you and me putting on pressure. Um, the Berlin Wall came down because of people like you and me. And, um, and I think this can come down because of people like you and me. I was very well aware of how our consumerism affects um, greatly the, the conflicts that happen in, as we call, third world countries. I've known about conflicts in the Congo for a long time. I didn't realize how directly the chain 
was affecting the conflict and how directly our, our buying of electronics was fueling um, the conflicts. If you're, if you're an artist, if you're you know, not in the political world, uh, number one, you can, you're very, you can be passionate about things and you can just speak out because it's something that you feel about and it's not, it's not your profession and you don't, you don't necessarily care if people agree with you or not, but you feel like there's something you need to talk about and, and, and so you do it.